everybody, David here, Mike Zero TPT from Martin Lynch and Sons. How to unlock your antenna's potential. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. Sometimes we don't know what's going on with our antennas. We can see the SWR meter and we know it's a little bit high. We know the tuner can bring it in, but what's actually happening with our antenna? We've got something that's gonna help us figure out exactly what's happening so we can improve things and maybe get out that little bit further, maybe bust that pile up, you never know. And this is what we're gonna be talking about today. The Rig Expert Zoom 650. And it's really helped me not only to improve my antenna, but also to help me understand exactly what's going on. In this video, we're gonna go over some of the functions that this particular model offers. Obviously, we've got a range of Rig Experts at the moment, so you'll be able to check those out. This is the one that I plump for. Now, why did I go for the 650? The 650 stands for 650 megahertz. So it goes from zero to 650 megahertz. That means that I can cover off when I make antennas for two meters and 70 centimeters. So it just allowed me the full range of the frequencies, the bands that we have access to, to be able to help build my antennas and obviously check the antennas that I've purchased. It taught me a lot. It, it, really taught me exactly what happens when I push that key uh, sitting in the shack and keying up and calling CQ or going back to somebody and just what happens, how the RF goes down the coax, how that interacts and how it interacts with my antenna. And I can pretty much guarantee that because I've used this and checked out my antennas and made sure that they're running at the most efficient level that they could, uh, as I said, small garden can't always be efficient, but we can be effective using the analyzer. So living with this for three years, field days, uh, gone out with a Golf 8 AMC where we've done some uh, antenna building, uh, cobwebs uh, especially, we, we used a cobweb portable and, and this was really handy. There's a specific feature in here uh, that allows you to see multiple bands and the SWR. So. We're gonna head on and get into the settings and I'm gonna show you just some of the features that this analyzer has. So let's get the 650 zoom connected and have a look at some of the settings that we can set and also what it can test. Okay. When I first purchased it, the first thing I needed to do was just go through the setup and the manual explains um, the, the settings that you need to look at. So we're gonna go into the settings of the 650 zoom first. So you can choose your language. It, you can change the colors uh, of uh, uh, the display and what you would like. Uh, the battery, uh, intensive. Uh, I just have this always set to intensive. I don't see any detriment to the batteries. It just means it's working um, efficiently. Uh, the sound, we'll go down a little bit more to the important ones the bands. So this is pre-programmed with our band plans as they are. Um, so we can go in and actually select the country where we are or the region where we are and it'll automatically set the band plans, the band widths. Uh, so we can, we can look at that in a minute. Uh, the other thing is probably the most important, if you wanna get as accurate as you can, is the velocity factor. Um, so we need to set the velocity factor and it's different for each type of coax. So I've set this to 0.75 and that seems to work for me. Um, in fact, it probably could be a little bit higher. I use the Ultraflex 7, it probably could be a little bit higher, but 0.75 because I do use a mixture of coax um, uh, if I'm out portable or whatnot. So 0.75, that's probably quite an important thing uh, for most people to make sure you've got the right velocity factor in there. 0.75 really, really works. Apart from that, you can pretty much ignore all of the other ones in there. I've got Bluetooth turned on and we'll look at the Bluetooth in a bit and how we can connect that to our phone. And obviously you can reset and clear all your saved charts because you can save down on this unit. So basically you've got the keypad here, you've got the cancel, you've got the okay, and then each one of these buttons has a different function, pretty much like your keyboard that you have on your computer. So we're gonna go up, I'm gonna come back to the Smiths chart, 
and we're going to start off on the SWR chart. I've got this plumbed into our 20 meter beam that we've got on top of the shop here. Um, so we're, we're going to be looking at, at 20 meters. So if I just get it set up for 20, there we go. So I'm set on 20. Uh, I'm center frequency of 14175, and it's going to it's going to scan 175 hertz either side. And as you can see on the left hand side here, we can actually select our different bands and they're all, as I said, preset. So from 160 meters, 80 meters, 60, 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, 11 meters, 10 meters, six meters, two meters, and 70 centimeters. So we're on the 20 meter beam. So I'm gonna put that on 20 meters and then just simply let go. And then all you do is click the okay button, press it again to start the scan. So there, there's our scan of the full bandwidth for 20 meters. And as you can see, it pretty much is all below 1.5, uh, which, which, is, which is fine, could be better, but we are in a built up area and it's right next to a a metal roof. Uh, some of the features that you also have within 650 zoom is also that you can zoom in and zoom out. I've built antennas and the dip on where it's resonant hasn't been where I wanted it and it's been somewhere down here. It's been way down the band and obviously I couldn't see it so I didn't know how much to adjust the antenna uh, to move that up. So what you can do you can zoom out so you can see even more of the band itself and then it will fill in the gap. So for instance, we, uh, my dip could be down here. It could be too long, way too long. And I need to shorten the antenna, say it was a long wire or something like that. So this allows me to see where the dip is. I can then go and make my adjustments and then make sure I get it into the blue area, which is where our band plan states we can use on 20 meters. And then once I'm happy, I can then zoom in again. I can run another scan and then I can see exactly what I need to do. Or if I press and hold the okay button whilst pressing down the shift button, it'll actually constantly scan that section that I'm trying to figure out what I need to do, what I need to change to my antenna. So nice, simple sweep of the current band that you're on, you can select uh, all of the bands that we use in the UK um, and depending on your country, it will bring those different uh, band plans in. If I click OK, it then stops that scan. So nice and easy. You can also save these plots down. Also, if you use a USB cable and download some software from Rig Expert, you can also save those plots and view those plots on your PC and remote from the PC, which is quite handy. So to back out of here, we hit the cancel button and then we're going to go down to the RNX chart. This is quite interesting because obviously sometimes our SWR can say it's nice and it probably is nice, uh, but it doesn't mean to say that's where the antenna is actually resonant. So the RNX chart is quite handy for that. So our 20 meter antenna isn't resonant anywhere on that particular band. If we do that. It's all the way down here, um, but but we, we know that and we know we've got to look at our antenna and certainly uh, when we do do that, we will be using a, uh, a rig expert or an analyzer to be able to figure that out. So this is really handy just to see whether you're on the money or not when it comes down to your antenna being resonant on a particular frequency, um, whether it be FTA, uh, digital mode, or whether it's SSB on in the voice section um, of the band. So we're going to come out of this now. Uh, so the reactants and the capacitance, and then we're going to go down to SWR meter. This is quite cool. This gives us a traditional SWR meter that we would probably see on a, a modern radio. And if I click OK, we can then see the SWR at that particular frequency. So the frequency is up here. So we're at 14171. So what I should be able to do, if I click range, I can then change that. So if we go to 14, 
14250, and we click OK. Again, on 14250, we're 1.35 to 1. The other thing that's really interesting is the return loss. So the return loss here is 16.6 .6 dB, which is pretty good uh, on, on 20 meters. Uh, normally we want it above at least 10, uh, but that tells you just how much uh, return loss you've got in your coax. And this was one of the things when I first bought this and took it home and I looked at my coax, um, I could see that my return loss was, was really, really high um, from, a, from the point of view, the coax was really lossy. So although the antenna was there or thereabouts, I was losing quite a lot of my power. Uh, I was a, a 2E0 then, and um, obviously I only had 50 watts back then. And it was important that I got all of those 50 watts back up <laughs> to the antenna. So one of the things that I did do as a result was replace my coax. Uh, and that made the uh, return loss a lot better, made it more efficient. In fact, my SWR went up uh, because obviously my, K my coax was lossy uh, and therefore that tempered the SWR that I was seeing uh, at the test point in the shack. Uh, so I, I needed to do a little bit more work on the antenna and that's what I used the rig expert for just to figure that out and uh, get it a little bit more resonant. Uh, and it became much more effective. So nice and simple SWR meter uh, with the return loss there. So if we hit cancel, we come out, all parameters. A really handy screen. Uh, it will give you every single parameter at that particular frequency on that particular band at that particular time. It's all in real time. So we've got the SWR, we've got the return loss, we've got the phasing, we've got the reactants, we've got the capacitance. We've got everything that we need to take a little snapshot of what our antenna is doing. Uh, and then we can obviously flip the frequency and then see what it is throughout the band itself. If we come out, we've already looked at setup, so we don't need to look at that one. Calibration, we don't need to do anything with that. This is calibrated when it comes out of the factory and we don't have to worry about calibrating it. RNL. So th this is our, uh, another return loss screen. And if we just do this, I'm gonna get it on 20 meters again, there we go. And there's our return loss. I'll do a quick sweep, it's gonna be the same. So at 14, 189, I've got 17 dB. So not too shabby, that's pretty good. Uh, so you can check the return loss of your antennas uh, and, and that will give you an insight on what's going on with the transmission line with your coax and may prompt you to rethink either the length that you're using or uh, maybe upgrade it to a, a better quality. And as I said, once you do that, I did find that my SWR changed and my SWR actually went up because uh, there was less losses in the coax itself. Okay, so we're gonna come out of here. Now, TDR, which is Time Domain Reflectometer, easy for me to say. I really like this one because you can use this without a, an antenna on the end, and you'll be able to use the TDR chart to be able to see if there's any breaks or any damage to a, a particular coax that you've got plugged in. Sometimes, you know, coax gets pinched or it gets damaged in some way uh, on its way to the antenna and this will help us find a fault. So I've got an antenna connected to this so I'm going to be actually looking at uh, the, the entire system but we should be able to see from the TDR where the antenna starts and the coax finishes. You can also use this to measure lengths. I, I, I had several lengths um, in the shed uh, I didn't know how long they were and I needed to measure them and um, I did a little practice using this and it was pretty there or thereabouts. The other time that I used it was when I needed to replace my coax before I bring, bring my antenna down and then I could use the, uh, uh, the 650 to work out roughly about-ish what, uh, what the length was and then obviously ordered some up. Here we go. Okay, so we can see where the antenna starts, which is there. Okay, so where, where the, um, the SNR is dipping and the INR is a, 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 little, a little blip. Everything before that is our coax. And as you can see, there's no blips. And we can, we can zoom into that if we want to and, and take a closer look 
and then we can sweep it down. But as you can see, there's no issues with our coax. It's quite an interesting experiment of putting a lot of connectors together, um, you know, couplers and, and PL259s. And you can see that uh, it, it, really, it, it really doesn't make that much difference. So we've got the length in meters, but obviously if we wanted to make that accurate, we would need to remove the antenna there uh, because the antenna is having a uh, interaction, obviously, because it's plugged into the end of the coax. Uh, so it, it gives us um, different lengths depending on, on where we are and they, they, will, they will obviously change up and down, but it will allow us to work out exactly uh, where some damage has occurred because we can see the blip, we can move to it and it'll tell us exactly um, that's 41.06 meters um, into the coax and that's what we would need to have a look at so we could either cut it there and add a new piece uh, using a coupler uh, but we'd certainly be able to work something out so tdr nice and handy for checking coax multi sw swr um, certainly really good for a long wire um, what you can do you can actually um, program in your different frequencies so i've got uh, kind of the middle of 40, middle of 20, uh, 15, 17, and 80. This way you can look at a multiband antenna, a cobweb or a long wire, and you can quickly see where you're at. So obviously when we adjust long wires, sometimes it can have a knock-on effect um, with the other bands that it's resonant on. Uh, so nice and handy, multi-SWR. And again, it's live. It's live, as you can see there, it's constantly changing. So it's, it's live. We just come out of that. Tools, uh, I haven't used too many of these tools. Um, so you've got a stub tuner, uh, length and, v and VF, uh, cable loss and cable impedance. But you need to have uh, like loads for the end of the cables and whatnot. If I go into cable, cable loss, it will tell you, it will walk you through. Connect an open circuit cable to the antenna connector, then press the tick button. So it will talk you through and it'll do these different steps and then you'll, uh, it'll present you with the loss for this particular um, cable. So that is pretty much it for the 650 Zoom and all, all of the Rig Expert products, very, very similar. Um, some have Bluetooth, some don't, some have TDR, some don't. Uh, and obviously, you know, you just need to pick the one that's, that you're going to need or, or grow into, which is what I did with the 650. I decided I'll go with the 650 and I'll grow into it. And as I said, not, not only did it help me figure out my antennas and, and get them optimized, it also taught me quite a lot. Uh, we've also got a, a, a new addition to the Rig Expert range. That's the Match, um, which is quite an interesting proposition because you can start off with the base model and then that upgrade as you go through the hobby, as you grow through the hobby, um, you can buy the upgrade. So it's not a question of having to um, replace the unit. You can just upgrade it using the upgrade cards that uh, are on our, on our website. So do check that out. But again, if you need any help, we are always here to help. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.